conceptual Jay stuff. Sounded better than Jay. Jay. Things people talk Real about talk, it, I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. <laughs> dropping in on I hope everybody is having a good day forgive me I'm having uh, a little trouble with my voice but I shouldn't have a problem finishing here what I need to say uh, first and foremost um, again as will be evidenced by the content to follow we definitely need your support uh, supporting the work we do at the Odyssey Project whether it's Black Man Lead, which is currently in a targeted fundraising uh, phase, or Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, or Music is Life, and so much more. Uh, the wraparound services we do uh, for mental health, uh, skills training, and so much more for young black males up to the age of 30 and beyond in some instances. Uh, we need your support. Uh, we need to start supporting organizations who are actually put... Uh, boots on the ground doing work, something that we are failing at miserably. But I want to talk about something that is currently trending right now, and everybody's got a, an opinion one way or another. I want to talk about this, and I'm going to be very careful because I know how sensitive things get, and I want to make sure I stay within guidelines. Uh, we know how it goes. Um, Dwayne Wade, D. Wade, um, Gabrielle Union, D. Wade's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, youngest son, uh, who has changed the name. I'm not going to say the name. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, who has been almost a poster child for gender identification in children. Um, and I think that there's a problem with that, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But... Uh, there's a recent family photo of D. Wade and Gabrielle Union with the daughter, uh, Zaire, which is D. Wade's older son, who is probably taller than D. Wade now, um, and a basketball player, and his young girlfriend, and then his youngest son, and uh, another young white kid who looks underage as well. Uh, and underage is what I really want to talk about. Uh, and there's so many other things we can get into with this whole gender identity thing that I don't really want to get into right now. But I would, what I do want to get into is we keep talking about protecting our youth. We keep talking about uh, the importance of covering our youth, protecting our youth. Uh, so when we start talking about gender equality, gender identification, giving people the right to choose how they want to identify, we can talk about all the other things that come along with it. And there's a place for that. There's a place for that. There's a place for that. I'm not here to tell somebody what they can identify as or what they can't. What I do have problems with is when it interferes with other people's beliefs, standards, and the way they move. If you don't want me to interfere with you, then you can't expect me to open up and let you interfere with me. Now, do what you want. Say what you want. Be how you want. I'm not going to discriminate against you. We can be friends. We can talk. Uh, to a certain extent, to whatever. Uh, I have gay people in my family. I have, uh, I don't know of any people who are identifying as another gender in my family. It doesn't mean they don't exist. Um, you know, I love everybody in my family, including those people. There's no difference in the way I speak to them, handle them, treat them, or love them. Uh, they understand that I have a different point of view. And we don't have those conversations often because my point of view is my point of view, just like their point of view is theirs. And we don't have to agree in order to love one another and get along. We understand that. We don't try to force the other person to accept how we feel. Here's the problem I have with this particular situation. This kid, when they first popped him out there, I think was like 11. I think he may be at tops 14 now. The scrutiny that you expose this kid to by making him a poster child at that age without understanding the gravity of what it takes to feel the kind of scrutiny that comes at him. Now, you've emboldened this child 
because you have a platform and you don't necessarily always have to abide by the status quo norm because you're wealthy. A lot of things escape you and you pass that on to your child. The problem is social media has a way of ignoring socioeconomic status. Ask Will Smith. <laughs> My thing is, this, regardless regardless of what your beliefs are and my beliefs are clear i don't want to be ambiguous about where i stand is i don't support it but i love anybody who uh i consider to be my people so i'm not going to ostracize you i'm not going to mistreat you i'm not going to talk down to you uh, I'm not going to ignore your journey. That's your reality. That's your journey. You're living it. I'm going to respect it. But here's the problem. These kids aren't emotionally mature enough. They're definitely not sexually mature enough to be discussing or entertaining ideas about their sexuality or their gender preference. Uh, those are some highly complicated realities, some highly complicated uh, internal conversations that people have with themselves that you need a certain level of maturity to even process the consequences and the ramifications of decisions that are being made. And you're talking about pushing kids off into a situation in which they identify and then sitting up and even talking about allowing uh, for gender modification surgery, which again, uh, to me, should be legal until a person turns 21. I think when you turn 21, if you decide that's what you want to do, more power to you. It doesn't need my approval. That's the thing. You don't need anyone's approval. The idea that someone says they don't agree with you doesn't end your world. But there's a whole entire group that feels like if they can't get you to say it's okay, then there's something wrong with you. No, just like you have your beliefs, I have mine, and some of mine are non-negotiable. And that's okay. It doesn't mean I can't treat you with respect. It doesn't mean I can't love you. It doesn't mean that we can't work together. It simply means this is one area we will not agree. It, it Nobody is going to agree on everything. And, and I don't do this from a place of dogma. This is nothing to do with I'm not a religious person. I'm very much in tune with God. I come from a very dogmatic Christian background. Uh, but me and the church blew up a long time ago because I didn't support the dogma. But I do believe that there are certain things that are socially expedient, uh, culturally expedient, things that lend to support who we are and what we're trying to do. And there are other things that work against us. There are other things that have been placed strategically in front of us for us to stumble over. And we have to be real careful. Uh, it comes with a lot of study, a lot of reasoning, and a lot of understanding of the outcomes of certain social social situations uh, in the black community and historically. Uh, I don't take my position lightly, and I don't take my position personally. That's why I give people room to be them, is because my personal position is just that. My professional and my historical position is based on uh, what I've observed in time, what I've learned in research, and what I've seen historically and experientially. And those are the, the, the things that I present forth. My problem, again, is when, when did we decide it was okay to stop letting kids be kids? When, was it, when did it become okay to start making the gender preference agenda something that we placed on the back of children to wage a war? to get what we wanted. At what point, and, and let me be clear, so that, so that we can get real clear here. If that's my 14-year-old son, he can't kiss a girl in front of me, and definitely not in front of my wife. He can't, you know, maybe a, a goodbye peck on the cheek, but an intimate embrace and kiss, I think that's too much to be putting on a 14-year-old. We're over-sexualizing our kids, even heterosexually. Instagram is the worst of all. We are over-sexualizing our kids. We're placing way too much emphasis on their physicality, not enough on their mental and emotional development, and it's showing up in who they're becoming. We have a responsibility to our 
children to insulate them from things that may be harmful to them, things that may not be conducive to their effectual and effective growth. We have to learn what works and what's important and when. There's a time to have the conversation with our children. And unfortunately, culture and society is pushing that age further and further back. But to unleash the full brunt of something as complex as gender identity on a 14-year-old, and when it was actually pushed initially, the child was, wasn't even a teenager. The idea that a child can take on something of that magnitude and effectively navigate all the labyrinthine corridors of social development, mental development, sexual development, long-term implications, short-term implications, social impact, social, uh, <coughs> social response, and so many other things that they're going to have to go through in that decision. That's a lot to put on a child. You're not, you, 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 you don't see the correlation between the increase in prepubescent uh, suicide. Our children are being forced to face way too much at far too young. And so my whole problem with this is that we need to leave adult conversations, topics, and issues in the adult category. We need to invest ourselves in providing an insulated and protective area for our children to effectively develop and become properly socialized so that they are empowered and prepared to take on a world that's inherently hostile towards them already. And then when time comes, if there's something they don't see eye to eye with society on, if there's something they want to shift, they do it with a well-developed understanding of who they are. They do it with a time. Here's, the, here, 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 here's why it's important. Because uh, from a statistic and professional uh, perspective, from my expertise and not just me talking, over 80% of gender confused are, for a, a lack of a better term, children who are questioning their, their gender identity. Over 80%, if left uninfluenced by either side, normally choose their natural assignment and live healthy lives. So how many are being influenced socially solely by having it pushed upon them. How do you know you're not pressuring a child to accept something that they're simply questioning? I think you've got to step back from that. I think that has to stop being a preeminent question at such an early age. I think that as parents, we've got to challenge that. I think that as parents, we need to become more involved in the development and the growth of our children, period. Not just in their hypersexuality, but in their overall development. We are not producing children that are going to be highly effective in the world. We are we're producing children who are uncertain of themselves. We're producing children who are entitled. We're producing children that are more concerned with the accumulation and acquisition of things than the develop of oneself and the power to go out and produce and have a life that they can be proud of and sustain. There is so much that we are not doing and it's on us. This is why I, I keep coming to you and saying we need to support programs in the community that offer identity. We need to have more programs like Black Man Lead that will empower young black youth to stand up and be who they were designed to be. And even in the sense that they decided to be something else, they shouldn't have to grapple with that at such an early age. What we don't realize is there's an even darker agenda behind it. See, if we start to get, if we start to make it acceptable for young children 
uh, at a prepubescent age to determine their sexual preferences and their gender preferences. And we, ta- we, we continue to hypersexualize them. We continue to make them uh, be more perceived and, and, and seen in a sexual way. We advance this agenda that nobody seems to be talking about, but that is very present of pedophilia in acceptability in a pedophilia in pedophilia and what do i mean by that there are literally organizations and groups that are pushing the legalization of pedophilia the normalization of pedophilia a febophilia has almost become acceptable and for those who don't know the difference between pedophilia and a febophilia a pedophile is someone who is sexually attracted to prepubescent youth youth who have not yet sexually developed uh, a febophiles are uh, people who are attracted to a minor who has sexually developed. So if it's a female, she has breasts, she's developed hips, or whatever else that can be associated with uh, se- sexual uh, attraction. Uh, you know, a male may be more physically attuned and developed and have certain appearances, but they're still minors. And the fact that they're minors is a part of the attraction. Uh, so a febophilia has almost become acceptable. Uh, nobody's talking about it. Nobody looks down on it the way it should. It should be viewed as something very dangerous. You know, I don't care how well developed any of my teenage daughters may be. They're still teenagers, and they need to be treated as children. Uh, not that I'm not. I'm trying to stop them from growing up. I'm trying to stop them from being mishandled, uh, mistreated misused and that's important and I think that's something that we really truly need to strive for we need to work on so again when I see this kid not and this kid isn't just in a portrait with this other kid there's portraits circulating of them with an embraced kiss (coughs) excuse me with an embraced kiss again my 14-year-old son can't do that with their girlfriend. My 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 uh, 17-year-old had her first boyfriend that she met in middle school, and I met him before she even knew I knew about him. I've already peeped him out. I saw how they would move, and then they would always act like they weren't together. So I just called her on it, and she admitted it. And they were together for a while for for to be that young. And I'm the one that picked them up and took them to the movies. I'm the one. Anything they did together, it was me picking them up and I was watching them. And no, it won't be any kissing. You can hold her hand. You can hug her a little. But no, there's a level. And so it's not about the gender part of it to me. In this instance, it's about over-sexualizing kids, about pushing way too much on children at too early of an age. We've got to do something about it. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. I'm going to call on everyone uh, to show some love, show some support, and support the work we're doing. Because I can't tell you, right now, black men lead is so necessary. We need to properly socialize young black boys. We need to effectively develop and build skill sets in young men. We need to build a parameter, so to speak, of strong black men. And we need to develop the young ones that are coming along. It's so, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Frederick Douglass that says, it's easier to create and build strong children than it is to heal uh, or repair broken men. And I think that is so absolutely true that we need to be building strong black men from the ground up. Instead of trying to convert broken men, uh, angry men, traumatized men, confused men, and so much more. We talk about the importance of leadership, but leadership is something that is inculcated into the mindset and the development of a young black male at an early age. It's simply something that is understood, that is going to be expected of them as they grow into their manhood. You don't sit up and get a kid that has no sense of who they are, what they're supposed to be doing, how they're supposed to be doing it, and then make demands upon them when they turn 17, 18, 19, 20. That's not how it's going to work. So, again, I'm asking for your support. 
support the work we're doing, whatever it is, we need to come together and make it clearly understood that we're not going to eat, sit idly by and watch the over-sexualization or the hypersexualization of our youth. That's something that's definitely got to change. On that note, I'm out of here.